Today I'm gonna talk about how you can export your loops perfectly so you can send them to like bigger producers or like make your own like loop kits or things like that. There are a lot of things you need to watch out when exporting your loops like your export settings, like how you actually like mix the loop and how loud your loop is because that also like plays a huge factor. So let's just hop in FL Studio and I'm gonna show you the process. All right, so now we're in FL, I'm just gonna play this loop real quick. If you want to get the full loop, you can check it out at their music producer collective. It's called Lorm. We basically post loop kits or like other like type of kits uh, every single week. So uh, make sure to check that out. So now let's get to the actual loop. So first, before I start, I'm just going to say that music is very like an individual process. And of course, like everyone has other like opinions on something. I'm just going to give you some advice that will probably apply to you as well. But it's of course, like it's art. So everyone like has a different opinion on it. So first you want to like lay out your like actual loop. Um, so the way I do it, I just have it like play for 24 bars or like 32 bars. But there are also people out there who like make a whole like beat compositions. So they make their loops like two minutes long or something like that. I'm personally not a fan of that because at the end of the day, if the actual producer wants to like arrange something like unique, then he's just gonna take the stems at the end. So I just like to lay it out for 24 bars, start out with all the sounds playing and then just simply take away like the bass or the counter melody and just play with it. Uh, you don't have to like uh, invest a lot of time on this just so it sounds nice. And then what you wanna do, you just wanna take every single sound and put it at the end as like the stem right here. So the producer that actually wants to make a beat can just go there and like cut every single like stem out and then basically like arrange his own like beat uh, by using these like uh, stems. So basically you just separate each of the stems by two bars. So you can even like take more or less as well. But I like two bars just because uh, if you like put it right behind it and you have a lot of delay on the sounds then it's just gonna interfere with the like the first sound that played. Uh, you're gonna hear it in the stem afterwards. So just make sure they like put enough space in there and always put like the same amount of space because if you have like one bar here, three bars here, two bars here, then the guy who wants to actually split up with like the stems, the producer, he's gonna like have a lot of trouble like finding these like looping points. So just lay it out like this and the next thing that we want to do is actually put all the sounds, all the loop sounds into one single mixer channel. So in my example, it was this one right here, the 20th one. So the thing you want to do in here is just open up a fruity stereo shaper and open it up and then take the preset mid a side splitter right here basically what that does it's just gonna take your loop and it's gonna split up the mid part that you hear in your headphones and the sides so just go in your channel right here uh, right click uh, some other one i took the 21st right here right click and press route to this track i also named this one mids and this one sides just so it's a bit more organized and now i'm gonna explain why we actually want to do this so first i'm just gonna play the sides real quick So you can just hear the sides and here you can just hear the mids. And we're splitting these two up just because we don't want to have any bass frequencies in the sides or at least not a lot of them and the very like harsh ones. So I can show you a little picture right here. You can use this as like a small reference on how you should go about your mixes in general. And of course, for some people, this might be like a minor change and they find it completely like unnecessary. But I think just spending a bit more time on the mix of the loop can be the deciding factor if like the producer actually likes your loop. So I guess why not invest one more minute and have like a proper mix after. All right, so go to your mids channel now and open up through the EQ and take away some of the highs. Again, right here, we don't want it to be like very harsh and like having big changes. We just want to have like slight changes that like some people like, of course, you don't even hear it, but these uh, like things stack up and after adjusting all these small little details you're gonna hear a big difference at the end all right so now we took away some of the high end in the mids and now we want to open up an eq in the sides as well we want to go to this triangle right here go to monitor input and select side and then we just want to create a simple high pass right here so right click on the first one and go high pass and then like make it a bit steeper right here and then we actually also want to boost up the highs a bit so this is what it's gonna sound like All right, now we're just gonna boost the sides a bit more. So I think like one and a half decibels is fine. All right, so now we're done with that. The next thing we want to do is open up our master. 
and open up Maximus. It's a multi-band compression plugin and it's completely for free when you get FL Studio. So this is like an OP plugin. Like some people use Ozone 10, but this is like perfectly fine. So what we're gonna do in here, it's basically split up into low frequencies, mid frequencies and highs and also like the master where everything's played. So we're just gonna go to the low tab right here. So we're gonna play it real quick. It's just the bass. Um, take this knob right here and just merge it a bit so it's not too wide. Again, small little changes, so 5% is completely fine. Then go to the mids and actually don't like merge it, but separate it. Also 5% will be fine, I think. And then just go to the highs and take like 10%. Now go to the masters tab and uh, go to this little soft saturation threshold right here and just take 1%. So this like uh, ceiling thing just gets triggered. And then pull down the ceiling to minus three decibels. So three decibels is basically like the loudest thing we want the loop to be at. So between minus three and minus six decibels is like the perfect range. So now that we got that, we're just gonna play the loop. And we're just gonna gain it as much as possible. So take this post gain right here. And to be honest, it's already quite loud. So we don't need to like do a lot right here. I think 0.5 decibels will be perfectly fine. Basically, we just don't want it to clip because if it's clipping, then we have a lot of distortion on it and it sounds bad. I can show you an example. It just sounds uh, completely goofy. So just take uh, 0.5 decibels. It may be like more for you, but just play with it. So it barely like peaks. And also when you're using this, uh, also press this linear phase thing right here. I can't explain it to you like in detail because it's very complicated, but just trust me with this. So every single time you're using it, just press this linear phase thing. All right, so now we have a really decent mix and we have a very good volume. So if like a producer goes through like a bunch of different loops, uh, yours is just gonna stand out alone by just being louder. And now the final thing, of course, we need to do is export it out. So when I export it, I always take like WAV files, but if you're trying to send it out like in your email list or something like that, then taking MP3 files a lot of times is like more convenient just because the people don't have to download the big WAV files and they can just like access the MP3 files right away in their email and they can listen to it and they can immediately make a decision if they want to like use the loop or not. But if you're trying to sell loop kits or anything like that, then WAV files are always the best choice. So just save your files where you want them to be. And then uh, this is gonna open up. So the rendering settings, if you want, you could even like export out the WAV and the MP3 at the same time. But I always use like the WAV thing. So I just do that. For the mode, you're just gonna choose full song because other we don't want like a pattern or anything we just want the like complete thing for the tail just select cut remainder we don't want anything at the back like playing out just cut it when there's no sound left for the wave bit depth uh, we're just gonna take 32 bit float and stereo right here this is just the highest quality uh, for the resampling i always choose the 32 point sync uh, you could also choose the 512, that's like the highest quality, uh, but it's gonna take up a lot of space on your PC, I'm telling you. And it also takes a lot longer to export out, so... Uh, of course, if you're really like into all that and you want it to be like the highest quality, then you can choose like this one. But I think 32 point sync is perfectly fine. And I don't think that you hear a big difference between those, but maybe like some music enthusiasts are completely like uh, triggered right now of me like saying this. Uh, I'm not very educated on this, but uh, for the people I know, uh, they all like put it into like 32 point sync or 46, but they're not exporting it out at, like in these big files because it's just gonna take so much space up. If you have the space, of course do it, but I think it's just like a bit inconvenient. All right, and for this, just take the ones I have, uh, you could use like you could save like the tempo information right here so your bpm of the project um but i think you should only do that if you're like uh like exporting out accents or phrases um when you're like exporting out your loops you're gonna label them anyway with the key and the bpm so you don't really need the like tempo information so i never really do that if you're not into like the stems at the end and you actually want to have a single waveform for each individual sound then you can choose this option right here. I personally know producer grind, they do this all the time, but it's just very, like you have to export out a lot of like wave files with that. So uh, I think the, the producer grind kits, you always have to like uh, download the stems in like different parts because the files are so big. So part one, two, three, four. So if you want that, you can also like choose the split mixer tracks option right here. But I personally think it's the best way to do it like this, just because when you're sending it out, 
uh, then the producer doesn't have to struggle around by downloading the stems first and stuff he already has it in one file and then we're basically finished so start rendering out and that's it basically now we have a high quality export with a perfect volume and also a very good mix. So doing it that way is just gonna separate you from your competition and these smaller mistakes, they add up in the end and they really make your loop sound way better. So really try to invest these two more minutes into the project, it's really worth it at the end. And you're just always gonna have a consistent way of exporting out. So also if you're making a loop kit or something like that, so you're just gonna have like the same mix over and over again and it's not gonna be weird, like one loop is more quiet and one is more loud. And it's just gonna develop like your sound and the way that you export your stuff. So I hope you got some good value out of this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna see you very soon. Bye.